all cooperation of the head. In the meantime my friends were troubled with the fear that I might go mad. But my faith to God, and my submission to His will, soon dissipated this fear. The state continued for two hours, after which I had same dizziness. I afterwards frequently tasted of the A but I never again could reproduce these sensations. Van Helmont, Demon's Idea Reprinted by P. Davidson in The Mistletoe and Its Philosophy Von Helmont is only one of many who have accidentally hit upon the secrets of the early priestcrafts, but none in this age give evidence of an adequate comprehension of the ancient hermetic secrets. From the description Von Helmont give, it is probable that the herb mentioned by him paralyzed temporarily the cerebrospinal nervous system, the result being that the consciousness was forced to function through the sympathetic nervous system and its brain, the solar plexus. Continued the fourth cause of disease was what the Orientals called karma, that is, the law of compensation, which demanded that the individual pay in full for the indiscretions and delinquencies of the past. A physician had to be very careful how he interfered with the workings of this law, lest he thwart the plan of eternal justice. The fifth cause was the motion and aspects of the heavenly bodies. The stars did not compel the sickness but rather impelled it. The hermetists taught that a strong and wise man ruled his stars, but that a negative, weak person was ruled by them. These five causes of disease are all superphysical in nature. They must be estimated by inductive and deductive reasoning and a careful consideration of the life and temperament of the patient. The sixth cause of disease was a misuse of faculty, organ, or function such as overstraining a member or overtaxing the nerves. The seventh cause was the presence in the system of foreign substances, impurities, or obstructions. Under this heading must be considered diet, air, sunlight, and the presence of foreign bodies. This list does not include accidental injuries. Such do not belong under the heading of disease. Frequently they are methods by which the law of karma expresses itself. According to the hermetists, disease could be prevented or successfully combated in seven ways. First, by spells and invocations, in which the physician ordered the evil spirit causing the disease to depart from the patient. This procedure was probably based on the biblical account of a man possessed of devils whom Jesus healed by commanding the devils to leave a man and enter into a herd of swine. Sometimes the evil spirits entered a patient at the bidding of someone desiring to injure him. In these cases the physician commanded the spirits to return to the one who sent them. It is recorded that in some instances the evil spirits departed through the mouth in the form of clouds of smoke, sometimes from the nostrils as flames. It is even averred that the spirits might depart in the form of birds and insects. The second method of healing was by vibration. The inharmonies of the bodies were neutralized by chanting spells and intoning the sacred names or by playing upon musical instruments and singing. Sometimes articles of various colors were exposed to the sight of the sick, for the ancients recognized, at least in part, the principle of color therapeutics, now in the process of rediscovery. The third method was with the aid of talismans, charms, and amulets. The ancients believed that the planets controlled the functions of the human body and that by making charms out of different metals they could combat the malignant influences of the various stars. Thus, a person who is in neglects iron. Iron was believed to be under the control of Mars. Therefore, in order to bring the influence of Mars to the sufferer, around his neck was hung a talisman made of iron and bearing upon it certain secret instructions reputed to have the power of invoking the spirit of Mars. If there was too much iron in the system, the patient was subjected to the influence of a talisman composed of a metal corresponding to some planet having an antipathy to Mars. This influence would then offset the Mars energy and thus aid in restoring normality. The fourth method was by the aid of herbs and simples. While they used metal talismans, the majority of the ancient physicians did not approve of mineral medicine in any form for internal use. Herbs were their favorite remedies. Like the metals, each herb was assigned to one of the planets. Having diagnosed by the stars the sickness and its cause, the doctors then administered the herbal antidote. The fifth method of healing disease was by prayer. All ancient peoples believed in the compassionate intercession of the deity for the alleviation of human suffering. Paracelsus said that faith would cure all disease. Few persons, however, 
possess a sufficient degree of faith. The sixth method, which was prevention rather than cure, was regulation of the diet and daily habits of life. The individual, by avoiding the things which caused illness, remained well. The ancients believed that health was the normal state of man. Disease was the result of man's disregard of the dictates of nature. The seventh method was practical medicine, consisting chiefly of bleeding, purging, and similar lines of treatment. These procedures, while useful in moderation, were dangerous in excess. Many a useful citizen has died 25 or 50 years before his time as the result of drastic purging or of having all the blood drained out of his body. Paracelsus used all seven methods of treatment, and even his worst enemies admitted that he accomplished results almost miraculous in character. Near his old estate in Hohenheim, the dew falls very heavily at certain seasons of the year, and Paracelsus discovered that by gathering the dew under certain configurations of the planets he obtained a water possessing marvelous medicinal virtue, for it had absorbed the properties of the heavenly bodies. Hermetic Herbalism and Pharmacology the herbs of the fields were sacred to the early pagans, who believed that the gods had made plants for the cure of human ills. When properly prepared and applied, each root and shrub could be used for the alleviation of suffering, or for the development of spiritual, mental, moral, or physical powers. In The Mistletoe and Its Philosophy, P. Davidson pays the following beautiful tribute to the plants books have been written on the language of flowers and herbs, the poet from the earliest ages has held the sweetest and most loving converse with them, kings are even glad to obtain their essences at second hand to perfume themselves. But to the true physician, nature's high priest, they speak in a far higher and more exalted strain. There is not a plant or mineral which has disclosed the last of its properties to the scientists. How can they feel confident that for every one of the discovered properties there may not be many powers concealed in the inner nature of the plant? Well have flowers been called the stars of earth, and why should they not be beautiful? Have they not from the time of their birth smiled in the splendor of the sun by day, and slumbered under the brightness of the stars by night? Have they not come from another and more spiritual world to our earth, seeing that God made every plant of the field before it was in the earth? and every herb of the field before it grew? Many primitive peoples used herbal remedies, with many remarkable cures. The Chinese, Egyptians, and American Indians cured with herbs diseases for which modern science knows no remedy. Dr. Nicholas Culpeper, whose useful life ended in 1654, was probably the most famous of herbalists. Finding that the medical systems of his day were unsatisfactory in the extreme, Culpeper turned his attention to the plants of the fields, and discovered a medium of healing which gained for him national renown. In Dr. Culpeper's correlation of astrology and herbalism, each plant was under the jurisdiction of one of the planets or luminaries. He believed that disease was also controlled by celestial configurations. He summed up his system of treatment as follows You may oppose diseases by herbs of the planet opposite to the planet that causes them as diseases of Jupiter by herbs of Mercury, and the contrary. Diseases of the luminaries by the herbs of Saturn, and the contrary. Diseases of Mars by herbs of Venus and the contrary. There is a way to cure diseases sometimes by sympathy, and so every planet cures his own disease. As the Sun and Moon by their herbs cure the eyes, Saturn the spleen, Jupiter the liver, Mars the gall and diseases of collar, and Venus diseases in the instruments of generation. The Complete Herbal Many all European herbalists rediscovered only in part the ancient hermetic secrets of Egypt and Greece. These earlier nations evolved the fundamentals of nearly all modern arts and sciences. At that time the methods used in healing were among the secrets imparted to initiates of the mysteries. Unctions, Calaria, Filters, and potions were concocted to the accompaniment of strange rites. The effectiveness of these medicines is a matter of historical record. Incenses and perfumes were also much used. Insert Nicholas Culpeper. From Culpeper's Semiotica Aranica. This famous physician, herbalist, and astrologer spent the greater part of his useful life ranging the hills and forests of England and cataloging literally hundreds of medicinal herbs. 
condemning the unnatural methods of contemporaneous medicos, Culpeper wrote this not being pleasing, and less profitable tome, I consulted with my two brothers, Dr. Reason and Drive Experience, and took a voyage.